you know, as long as I've lived in Oregon, you kind of assume that, you know, the further that you can cast out here, the better chance you have of catching a fish. But in reality, you're kind of just standing right on top of them a lot of the times, especially on the bigger jetties. I think it's extremely surprising for a lot of people who, who see people doing this that haven't seen it before because you're literally just standing on top of the fish. So this is your uh, monkey face prickleback or the monkey face eel. Uh, not a true eel. It's actually in the prickleback family, which means that it can breathe outside of water. Um, and the reason for that is because when this tide goes out, they kind of stay in their little habitat in the rocks. They don't move very far, even for their whole lifespan, and they can survive not submerged. I think a lot of hesitation with fish cookery is just not knowing the exact uh, technique that's necessary for each one. With this eel, it's not any more or less intimidating than any other fish. Uh, it's a little bit uglier as far as the flavor goes. Uh, it's just as delicious as anything else that you can get out of the ocean. So we're gonna be using a poke pole today. This is a bamboo poke pole, and then it has a wire coat hanger wrapped around the end, and it's fashioned with duct tape. Been around for a long time. It's really effective, uh, and I would say that it could be attributed to Native American fishermen. So when you're poke poling, um, the rig and the setup is really simple. You just have to find a proper location. With the last two days, this is the fourth jetty that we've been on, uh, looking for them. You know, we were down in Southern Oregon. We decided to explore some jetties down there and had no luck. Um, even went up to Newport, which is more of a, you know, populous area for sea life. Still no monkey face eels or not, uh, not in enough population to really be able to find them easily. Um, and then now we're up here in Neetarts Bay. We're on the jetty that comes off the landing at the schooner restaurant. Oh, oh. <laughs> so the hook got out. So that's just sort of an example of what not to do. Just saw one take off from under this one that went like this. Yeah, right down there. Even so this high up, see it's just like an inch of water. I just waited for him to bite the bait a little bit more. I kind of let him have it and he'll start to hit it a little bit more and then you can kind of time him up. So we got another nice size one here, right in the exact same hole as the one that I just lost. So remember, just because you catch a monkey face seal in one spot doesn't mean there's not two, three, or sometimes several more than that in the same hole. One thing I will say about these is I actually prefer to eat the smaller ones. Um, the large eel, for some reason, can have more of like an iodine type flavor to it. The small ones, I feel like the flavor and the texture of the meat is a lot better. They often have higher fat content because typically a smaller, younger eel is gonna be uh, omnivorous as opposed to a large adult eel, which is gonna be basically only eating seaweed. They go to a, like almost a strictly vegan diet at a certain age. We have caught five of them in an hour, um, so a lot more luck. Now we're gonna head to the beach to process the eel and we're gonna grill it up. So here we are back on the beach in Neetarts Bay. Uh, we have our monkey face eel that we've caught. Uh, we're gonna show you how to fillet it, uh, prepare it, and then we're ultimately we're gonna grill and glaze it. So here we have our eel. We're gonna pat it dry here with a towel. Uh, they do have a little bit of slime, nothing at all like any other eels though. Uh, they're pretty clean for the most part. Uh, we're just gonna get it nice and dry. Make an incision straight to the bone. Come this other way, just make sure the cut is complete. And you can see the spine here in the center. We're just gonna follow right along that as we get the knife in. Just nice and easy right along the bones here. And we have our just nice long fillet. So you can see our bones are nice and clean. And we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing. All right, so we have our eel. 
uh, there are no pin bones in this fish either. So this is totally ready to go. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do here is just trim a really small amount here, just where the meat is too thin. A lot of times it just curls up and gets in the way. And we can just save that with our scrap meat that you can put in your smoker or dehydrator or whatever you'd like. So now that we have our eel filleted and cleaned, uh, we're gonna show you how to prepare them over a grill today. Uh, we're gonna finish cleaning up this fillet, portion it, put it on skewers. We're gonna cook it over some very hot charcoal in the yakitori and finish it with a simple glaze that we've prepared. We're gonna flip it over. But we're just gonna scrape any remaining unwanted moisture right off of the outside. This will help with the grilling process. They do have scales, but they're really tiny and they don't need to be removed for this dish. So next we're gonna take our skewers. These have just been soaked um, overnight in a little bit of seawater. So we're gonna go into the meat, right under the skin, and you're gonna weave it. So you come in and then up, right to the skin and then back down. So we're basically securing the skin in place so that when we cook it over our fire, it doesn't move or curl up at all, which is something that can really happen with this. Um, and the whole key to being able to pull this dish off is to be able to cook the skin really hot so that it breaks down. All right, so now we have our skewered eel. Just kind of grab these up like this. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can bunch them up at the end, whatever, just as long as it stays a little bit flat. We're gonna flip it over onto our cooking tray. I'm gonna take a little bit of sea salt here, sprinkle it over the flesh but only on the flesh side. You're not gonna do any salt on the skin. And you can kind of pat it on there just to make sure that it sticks. And then we have our eel that's skewered and ready to grill. Just like with all the preparations that we do, we're just trying to prepare this as simply as possible to highlight the natural flavors of it. So we aren't trying to overcomplicate it, no excessive ingredients. Sea salt from the same bay that it's caught in. So we just have our uh, charcoal that we've ignited in a little chimney, um, just to get it nice and hot before it goes into the yakitori. We want it to be about a medium heat, medium high. Um, it's almost a requirement, I would say, to use a thin wire grate for grilling the eel or any fish skin, because you're gonna give your skin more surface area over the flame as, as opposed to having large bars. And what this is gonna allow it to do is the fat to render out of the skin, which is gonna cause it to become crispy. All right, so we have our eel fillets that have been skewered. They've been cured really lightly with salt. It's been sitting for about 30 minutes with the sea salt on it. We have our charcoal that's gotten raging hot over here in the yakitori. We're gonna take our eel fillet. We're gonna take a little bit of grapeseed oil. This is a cooking oil. And we're just gonna put a couple drops on here and then take our finger and just rub it on the filet here, just to make sure it has a really nice even coating. So you don't want any excess. If there's a single drop that hits the charcoal, it'll cause a flare up, which causes your fish to take on an off flavor. We're gonna go right over this hot part. Just wanna hear a nice light sizzle. Um, and this is gonna go for probably about five minutes total um, and almost entirely on the skin side. You kind of just want to hang on to these for a second and just hold the um, eel in place. Just take a look to make sure it's not getting too dark. You don't want too much color. So the key to cooking the monkey face eel is to get the skin to break down really quickly as it contracts over the charcoal. Um, that way it doesn't curl up and we keep a nice flat surface and we're using that nice uh, dense fatty skin to sort of protect the delicate flesh as it cooks. Uh, once the skin starts to render. Um, if you were just to put this fillet directly on the grill, it would just curl up into a, a weird looking gray tube. So what we're looking for there, nice color, a few black spots and bubbles, um, and you can feel it with your hand. It's just extremely crispy. So it's okay to get it a little bit dark. It's kind of what you're looking for. You know, we've cooked it almost 90% of the way just on the skin, and then we're gonna let it hang out here for a second. And now that we have it flipped, we're gonna apply our glaze. Um, but we've just taken a stock that we've made from our smoked and dried eel bones from previous fish and reduced that down to a glaze. And it's been seasoned with a little bit of tamari from some of our house-made uh, barlodi bean miso and also a little bit of fish sauce that we've made in-house with butter clam scraps. Another layer right on there. Don't be afraid to get it down on all sides. Yeah, you can definitely smell the glaze. It's cooking, it's hitting the grill, it's caramelizing more around the edges, which is perfect. Um,
So this is our finished product here. Um, the monkey face eel has been filleted, cured, then skewered. We grilled it really intensely over charcoal to break that skin down, let it finish cooking on the flesh side as we glazed the skin um, with our eel sauce. And then we're gonna put one last layer of this right over the top, all around the sides. And that is your barbecued monkey face eel caught on a poke pole here in Neatarts Bay. So, skin is super crispy, totally rendered out. The glaze is sweet and tangy and has a nice mouth coating quality. And the meat is extremely tender and has like a almost like a mouth coating fattiness to it. Um, this is one of the main reasons why we were saying that the best monkey face eel to harvest are the juvenile ones that are between 12 and 14 inches that are like, you know, just under a pound. The flavor is so sweet, so clean, still has all that fat in there and um, delicious crispy skin.